Hi everybody, welcome to QuickBooks Online US edition, multi-currency features. My name is Hector Garcia, and there's my email address if you have any questions. First of all, if you don't have a QuickBooks Online uh, trial, I strongly recommend that you set up a, a free account, a separate trial, just to test this concept first before you implement it in a live company. And I'll explain why. Uh, let's talk about some basics of multi-currency on QuickBooks Online. First of all, in the US edition on QuickBooks Online, which is the one that we'll be doing uh, the example of here, the home currency must be US dollars. We actually do not have the choice to have a different home currency than US dollars in the US version of QuickBooks Online. However, in the international version of QuickBooks Online, you can have any currency as the home currency. So that's a big difference there. However, if you are in the US and you create a QuickBooks Online account, the only type of account you can create is US uh, version of QuickBooks Online. So you must be outside of the US to be able to create a international version of, of QuickBooks Online. So we're focused on the US version of QuickBooks Online, where the home currency is always US dollar. So let's talk about why do we need to work with multiple currency? The concept of why we would need to enable this. So number one is if we have foreign bank accounts and these foreign bank accounts used a foreign currency and we need to reconcile those bank accounts and, and at, at, at some point, you know, see them on the balance sheet, uh, we need to see them uh, at the U.S. converted amount. That way it makes sense when comparing it to maybe some a U.S dollar version bank account. So so because we need to uh, reconcile these foreign bank accounts, we just need to be able to work in foreign currencies. The other piece is every single transaction is going to display or post in our financial st statements as US dollars. So it's going to be converted sort of in real time up to the date of the financial statements that are being issued. Um, we want to be able to issue an invoice in a foreign currency, maybe for a foreign customer. Maybe we have a customer in, in Europe and we need the invoice to display the value in euros, not in dollars. And we want that invoice to show an accurate euro amount and an accurate equivalent in, in US dollars. Same thing with vendor bills. I may have bills over, uh, been vendors overseas that have their own currency and I want to enter that in their in their foreign currency and then be able to convert that to US so I can know the equivalent. But the most important piece is this last point here is we want to be able to post our gains and losses. You know, when, when you do business internationally, especially with foreign currencies, you run the risk of uh, the foreign currency increasing or decreasing in value. So if, um, if it costs more in terms of US dollars to acquire a British pound today than it did a month ago, and we committed a month ago to a specific uh, uh, British pound amount, but we're going to pay it now, we're actually going to take a loss, right? Because we're actually going to end up paying more out of the US dollar equivalent if we're paying for it today, but committed uh, that in the past where it was a, a lower rate and vice versa. Other important points about multi-currency is, <clears throat> number one, once it's enabled, it cannot be turned off. So it's going to be a permanent change to your QuickBooks file where you actually turn on multi-currency and you cannot turn it off. All existing customers, so if you already have a, a, an existing QuickBooks file and you have customers and vendors, those will all automatically be assigned as US dollar ones and you will have to create a new vendor or a new customer, even if it's the same one on the list with a slightly different name, um, if you're going to be dealing with that customer or vendor in a foreign currency as well. Every vendor and customer will have a default currency and all the transactions with that specific customer or vendor must be done at that default currency. Again, if I have a customer or a vendor that I transact in multiple currencies, I have to create them as two separate, separate vendors or two separate customers in QuickBooks. <clears throat> now, the foreign exchange gain or loss account is created as an other income or expense. And basically what it does is um, it takes the value, the original value of a transaction like, a, like an invoice or a bill, um, and it converts it at US dollars back when the transaction was created. 
and when the payment for that transaction so if i create a bill for 5000 euros in june for example when the exchange rate was 1.2 dollars per euro um, and then i end up paying it a couple of months later when the exchange rate is now 1.1 us dollar per euro it's now cheaper to purchase euros therefore i'm going to have a gain posted in my financial statements when I go pay for uh, this bill. Now in an invoice scenario, for example, I create an invoice in, in uh, 1,000 euros, a customer is gonna pay me 1,000 euros, which is worth the same example, $1.2 uh, per euro. So it's, it's about $1,200 worth, right? But the customer actually ends up paying me in August when it is, again, cheaper to buy euros therefore the euros are worth less us dollars so the difference is going to post as a as a loss right um into our financial statement and that's basically what uh, what it means and I'll, I'll do an example of that um here in the in the demo so i got a brand new quickbooks file here and i'm going to click on the settings menu here in the top left and go ahead and click on company settings and then I'm going to go down, scroll down here on the company section. I'm going to click on where it says currency, multi-currency off. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then it's going to give me a checkbox. And then at that point, I can choose to enable multi-currency. And it actually gives me a warning, right? It says multi-currency may be right for you. Please make sure that uh, you know and you're aware of this because you can't turn it off. You can only use a home currency. I'll talk about all those details. So you actually have to agree and say, I understand. And you can't undo it. So if you don't like it afterwards, uh, you're going to have to reset the whole company file if you don't want to see any more multi-currency. Okay, so I'm going to click on Save. I'm going to click Done. And now basically multi-currency is enabled. So let me show you uh, what are the things that you have to do sort of differently uh, now that you have multi-currency enabled. Uh, every time we create a bank account or a credit card account or a loan account or anything of monetary value, we're going to have to tell it what currency it uses. And the next step after it's been set up, we go to the gear menu on the top right, also called the settings menu. And then under lists, we're going to go down to currencies. When we click on currencies, it's going to take us to a screen where all the foreign currencies that we want to work with are going to be set up. Now keep in mind that the home currency, it's always going to be the US dollar. So you cannot have a different home currency that is not a US dollar. So I already set up Canadian dollar and Euro. I'm gonna click on add new, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the British uh, sterling pound. So I'm gonna click on that, and then click on add new. And immediately when that is added, the exchange rate based on you know, into its uh, information is going to be set for you. And that, that could actually be changed uh, later. We, we, could, we could talk about that um, here under the edit currency and historical rates and all that stuff. But we'll talk about that later. So once all the currencies are set up, it's time to set up uh, several customers and several vendors um, to work with this multiple currency. So let's say I'm gonna create a customer. I'm gonna go to create new customer. And then I'm going to create a customer called uh, British Companies. And this one is going to be a customer that we sell in pounds. Okay. Um, so the key component here is, is when the customer is being created, if you don't pay attention to uh, the, the, the currency, it's going to be set up as a uh, US dollar. So we have to go into payment and billing. And then we have to scroll down and right here where it says this customer pays me with, I have to hit the drop down and select the currency that I'm going to use. Now that's a very important step because if you miss it, then you would have to create a new customer to be able to set it up with the correct currency. So I'll click on save on that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a vendor. So let's say this vendor is in Canada. So I'll go to a new vendor and I'll put uh, can companies or something like that and this is going to be a vendor that we're going to purchase uh, items from but not in US dollars in Canadian dollars so that in a, in a nutshell kind of gives you an idea that every time you create a vendor or a customer it has to be in that foreign currency now we're going to click on the gearbox again and go into the chart of accounts 
so we can talk about uh, bank accounts and, and uh, multiple currencies. So let me go ahead and create a new bank account and this is going to be my my US based bank account I will put here uh, Bank of America. Okay, and we'll make sure that we select the currency there US dollar. And then I'm also going to go ahead and create a bank account. Let's say I have a bank account in um, in, uh, in London. So I'm going to create a bank account here and I will call it here Barclays. And this is going to be in British pounds. Perfect. Uh, save and close. Okay, so we'll kind of get started with that. So let's say um, that we're going to go ahead and sell some stuff to our to our customer that's in Great Britain and get paid in British pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and go to create new invoice and I'm going to go ahead and select my customer here, which is British companies. And that's going to be in British uh, pounds and in, in, in Great, Great Britain pounds. And that's going to be converted into 1.57 US dollars. Okay. So one sterling pound uh, equals 1.57 US dollars. So let me go ahead and select, uh, uh, let's say a service. So we'll go here, sales. And then this is going to be 1500 uh, sterling pounds. And you're going to see up here the correct sign. This tells you that you're selling at a foreign currency. And uh, down here, it gives you a quick conversion of what that represents to your financial statement because the financial statement is always in US dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and click. Uh, save and close and then show you in the financial statement what that looks like. So I'm going to go to report, profit and loss, and then we're going to get to see our sales are in US dollars. So when I click on that 2355 and I click on the transaction itself, it will take me to my sale, which is in sterling pounds. However, it's been converted to uh, US dollars at whatever the conversion rate was on the date of the transaction. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and make a purchase. So let's say I want to purchase some, some services. We'll, we'll keep it like we'll get inventory out of the equation here to avoid complicating things. But I'm going to make a purchase in Canada. Um, and that's going to be, a, let's create one called purchases here. Purchases cost to consult. And let's say that we're buying something in, now this is Canadian dollars now. So this is going to be 1200 Canadian dollars, which is roughly about 900 US dollars. So it's good to pay attention to um, the equivalent, okay? Um, so that's 1200 Canadi Canadian dollars, which is the equivalent of 900 US dollars. However, I don't have an account in Canada, so I'm gonna actually end up paying this from my US account. Okay, let me go ahead and hit save and close and pull up the financial statement as well, because that's gonna make a lot of sense when we see you know, what our sale was in US dollars and what the cost was in US dollars as well. So that's the, the really important piece is that on the reports, it's always gonna show in home currency, which is US dollars. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same example uh, I just showed you, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and delete the transactions and I'm gonna backdate them because I wanna show you a change of rate over time. So let me go ahead and, and delete that bill and also I'll delete the, the customer invoice as well and I'll just recreate them and I'll backdate them. That way we're gonna have a sort of a, a different date on the transaction itself. Okay, so let's do that invoice for my British co company, but I'm gonna date this back in August 1st. So when I date this back to August 1st, I'm gonna see a different uh, rate in there. Um, so let me go ahead and do this for 1500 British pounds and there's a, my US dollar equivalent and I'll hit save and close. And then let me go to vendors and do that, uh, that same bill, uh, for, I believe it was 1200, it was 1200, uh, Canadian dollars, but this is going to be backdated to August 1st there. So I'm going to backdate that to 1200. That's a slightly different dollar amount. So I'm going to hit save and close. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the profit and loss report so we can see the effect that we have. And there it is. So in my profit uh, right now that I have not received any money or paid out any money, my profit is 1,426.47. That's in US dollars. But, but what happens is when I go pay that bill, so let me go ahead and 
uh, pay that bill. I'm going to go to pay the bill, but I'm going to pay it uh, today. So what happens is when I pay that bill today, and let me look for Canadian dollar bills, and this is a very important thing, is when you go pay bills, they're sorted or grouped by by the foreign currency. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Canadian dollars. I'm going to select that bill. And then notice that the original uh, bill amount had a different US dollar equivalent. There was about $18 difference um, because the, there was a, a rate change over the last 25 days or so. Um, whatever the difference in that exchange rate is, uh, it could benefit me or it could go against me. In this particular case, uh, is going to benefit me. So I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, save and close. And then I'm going to go back and take a look at that profit and loss report and, and see what happens. See, my profitability changed. And QuickBooks automatically posted the difference between what the original uh, expense was uh, and what the new expense is uh, adjusted to the foreign, foreign exchange uh, change. That's a very interesting concept there. Let's do the same thing with the British pounds because the British pounds actually got more effective. So now this is going to go uh, against me uh, as well. So let me go ahead and go to uh, new and then we'll go to receive a payment from a customer. And uh, let me go ahead and select my customer there. There it is and select the invoice. I'll put today's date. So now we have a change. We did, we did have a change. And then I'm going to go ahead and receive that payment, hit save and close. And then what happens is there's going to be another adjustment that goes against me. So it looks like over the last 25 days or so, the US dollar went down in value, both from the perspective of the Canadian dollar and the British pound. So that's the, the exchange rate uh, gain and loss effect that we have in there. This is a very basic overview of how multi-currency works in, in QuickBooks Online. Uh, this feature was just added in uh, <clears throat> mid-2015, so we're still experimenting with uh, different things in, in multi-currency as we get more and more clients into it, and we're uh, learning a lot of it um, as we go. Um, if you think the video was useful, go ahead and, uh, and click like and add some comments and questions about anything that you think I should cover a multi-currency in a future video. I'm definitely thinking about making a more in-depth video as I, as I get a lot deeper into it. So go ahead and ask some questions or send me an email so I can understand what kind of questions people are having out there on uh, multi-currency. Thank you.